What up, guys? The Bench Buddies are back with my week six college football rankings, and we'll be breaking down the top 25 teams heading into week six. But before we get into it, hit that subscribe button to be entered in our giveaway at 500 subscribers. Dropping from this week's rankings are the Bruins of UCLA and Kansas after their very ugly loss to Texas. UCLA falls out even off of a bye week. They just didn't play, and there's some teams that jumped them. And they stay in the others receiving votes. And Fresno State, they're still undefeated. Maryland undefeated. The Air Force undefeated. And all these teams are right here on the doorstep of jumping into the top 25. Even AM, if they can get a big win this weekend against Bama. And 25 are the Louisville Cardinals. And they squeaked out a game against NC State. Very ugly game on the you know, they got the win. They're 2-0 in ACC play. The defense looked great, and they just need to figure out the offensive side of the ball more if they want to go and beat Notre Dame this weekend. 24 are the Blue Devils, and they suffered a tough loss to Notre Dame at home. They were one play away from winning this game and more than likely being a top-10 team. But, you know, uh, Sam Hartman scrambles gets the first down and so on so forth and then Riley Leonard gets hurt on the last play of the game so a lot that could have happened for Duke in the good but now it's a bad situation as luckily they have a bye this week where they can rest up and get healthy 23 Wildcats at Kansas State they're staying put here dropping one uh, coming off of a bye week they get Oklahoma State and Will Howard's gonna have to be the guy this team wants to possibly win another Big 12 championship 22 are the Missouri Tigers, and they beat Vanderbilt pretty good. Uh, they went 5-5 five for five in the red zone, and now they get a tough LSU team coming off of a loss, and you know they're looking for some revenge, but going on the road yet again is going to be tough for them to do against a very good and surprising Missouri team. 21 is Kentucky, and they jump into the rankings here their first time, and what do you get when you get into the rankings finally? You get number one, Georgia, and it's going to be the toughest game of the year. And even if they win or lose this game, they still have Missouri and Tennessee after this game. So they have three straight tough games. And if they can go two and three in that, I think this Kentucky team is looking at definitely a higher ranking by then. 20 is Utah. They lost an ugly game against Oregon State. And they two for th went two for 13 on third down, 198 total yards. Nate Johnson didn't play his best. Cam Rising still is a big question mark, and hopefully he can come back after this bye. And if he does, then this Utah team is going to be a completely different team. 19 is LSU, suffered that tough loss at Ole Miss, and this is for sure the best two-loss team in the country. Now they go on the road to Missouri, which would be a tough game for both of those teams. But Jaden Daniels had an excellent game in his best target, Brian Thomas, as well. But this defense needs to figure some things out if they want to win some games. And the two losses against Florida State and Ole Miss, they've given up a lot of points. So the defense is the problem here, not the offense, as the offense can score. 18 is Tennessee. Took care of South Carolina pretty easily. The defense went off six sacks and interception and holding the South Carolina for two for 15 on third down. Joe Milton didn't play his best throwing two interceptions, but getting one touchdown. And he'll look to correct some things heading into the bye week. And Tennessee, you know, looking like another good SEC team this year. 17 is Miami. They're 4-0 heading into ACC play this week and should really destroy Georgia Tech as they are a very bad team. 16, Washington State coming off of a bye as well. They get UCLA, who is my 26th best team in the country. So it should be a very good week for both of these teams. And whoever wins this game more than likely will be ranked next week. And if Washington State pull off that win on the road, they're going to start to turn even more heads and it could come down to the Washington, Washington state game at the end of the year. 15 is North Carolina. They're off a bye as well, getting Syracuse after suffering their first loss to Clemson. And if they can get that win, move to two and zero in the conference five, no overall, it feels like the AC cha ACC championship is going to be them versus Florida state. If these teams keep playing how they are 14 is Oregon state beating Utah wasn't a pretty game. Ugalele struggled, didn't really have to do too much, though, because the offense held the ball for a while and the defense really took care of business. Now they get Cal, which they should go in and get a huge win. Um, I don't know. This this Oregon State team is very questionable to me. I think I don't see them ever entering the top 10 because I think they will have a slip-up loss. Ole Miss, obviously, as I spoke at them earlier, 
had a big win at home against LSU to keep their SEC chances alive. And they had a 21 point fourth quarter getting it done when it matters most. And now they get Arkansas at home, which should be coming off a of cloud nine could be a trap game, but I don't think they will. I think they'll survive Jackson Dart. As long as he's healthy and playing good, this Ole Miss team is going to be very scary towards the end of the year. 12 is Oklahoma absolutely destroyed Iowa state. And this is the first time since 2011, I believe, that the Red River showdown is going to be two undefeated teams. And Dylan Gabriel is going to put this team in a position to win, I think, in the last drive of the game. It's going to be a very close game. And honestly, I can see Oklahoma winning this game. It feels like they just have all the pieces going into this game where they can get it done. 11 is Oregon. And this team struggled in the first quarter, didn't score at all, but then scored 42 straight points to win this game on the road in Stanford, heading to the bye, very happy about what they've done so far this season as they look to come out and just assert more dominance in Pac-12. 10 is Notre Dame getting that win on the road at Duke. And you know what I said earlier, Sam Hartman's fourth and 16 run to give them the first down and give them a chance to win, which they did. And it wasn't really on him. That was his pretty much biggest play of the day. Uh, Mitchell Evans looked good as well. The tight end catching six balls for 134 yards. And Audrey Estamine, is the workhorse back not only for this team it feels like in the country he just keeps getting the ball and keeps producing now they go on the road yet again to face another ranked acc team nine is alabama really didn't do much to beat mississippi state here i beat him for the 16th straight time and put 31 points on him in the first half and since then it was pretty much over milro did good with his feet more than he did with his arm and now they get AM, which is always a tough game for them. And going into College Station is going to be a tough place to play. Eight is USC. They squeak by Colorado. Uh, the offense really looked good in the first three quarters and looked like they were going to put up 60. But then in the fourth quarter, they just didn't show up. And defense let them down. But I think speaking of the defense, the defense is going to be the key part to this USC team. Are they going to be really good this year? You know, the offense is more than likely the best in the country, but the defense is their weak point. And if they can get exposed against the team that can keep up with them, then USC might suffer a few losses here. Seven is Washington. And this story, the game final score looks better than it really was. Washington destroyed them. Uh, they didn't really let them make any big plays. So they had a lot of check downs. Penix Jr., you can see there, didn't throw for any touchdowns or rush for any, but he relied on his other weapons, Dylan Johnson, two touchdowns, and they punched it in a lot on the ground. Five for six in the red zone really gets it done as they head into the bye week. Very happy with what they've done so far. Six is Penn State. Same story. They had a tough first half, uh, but then they scored 31 points in the second half to absolutely demolish Northwestern. Defense did great. Drew Aller, so-so game, and Singleton had a great game, but they head into the bye week looking to get some rest, and now they dive into the tough Big Ten schedule. Ohio State comes out of the bye week to face a very good Maryland team at home who's also undefeated, and Penn State and Michigan feel like the games that Ohio State, it's going to come down to. It, it has for the last two, three years, and maybe this is a trap game against Maryland, but now it's not September Maryland. It's going to be October Maryland, and as the season progresses, this Maryland team just somehow the wheels fall off every year. So expect Ohio State here to take care of business. Falling one is Florida State, and not so much because they didn't do anything. It's just Texas jumped them, let's be honest here. The championship berth to the ACC is theirs for the taking. Have a very easy road to do so, and I see them doing so. And I think this team is going to finish 12-0 heading into that ACC championship game. Three is Texas, dismantled Kansas, and that's because Daniels did not play for them, the quarterback. And if he plays, I think this is a lot closer game, but he didn't bean played and they really took advantage of that. Quinn Ewers had a good game, especially with his legs rushing for two touchdowns. John Brooks as well, two touchdowns and over 200 yards rushing, which I think he's the third most in Texas history, I believe it was. I can't remember the exact stat, but it was it's a good stat to have against Kansas. And now they get Oklahoma on the Red River Showdown. It's going to be a tough game. I believe Oklahoma is going to pull the upsets. So there's my peak for the picks for this week. And Texas is going to fall to five and one, but I don't expect them to drop out of the top 10 anytime soon. Two are my Michigan Wolverines. And this team, I don't know. They just finally turned it up a notch. McCarthy looked great. 
only throwing for 16, only throwing 16 passes and for two touchdowns. Corum, yet again, another touchdown. Roman Wilson looks like the number one target for sure. And you want to know an interesting stat. They've only allowed 17 points through five games in the second half all year. And if this defense is going to be top tier like they were last year and this offense starts to click more and no one gets hurt, then Michigan looks like they're going to be on another path to 11-0 against Ohio State. And that one, yet again, for foreseeable future, are Georgia Bulldogs. And it's concerning. I'm starting to think that Michigan might jump them, not because of my bias, but because they let teams hang around and have to pull it out here at the end. And if same goes for the Kentucky game and it's a close game and they really let them hang around, you know, Georgia might not stay at number one just because number one team should beat these teams pretty good. And they've started to struggle here in their last two SEC games, South Carolina down at half, Auburn tied at half. And if it's the same performance, then Georgia might be falling, but you got to give them credit. They do find ways to win the games. Brock Bowers had his best game this year, Carson Beck as well. And now that they start to play some better SEC teams, are they going to be able to hang with them? That's the big question for the Bulldogs right now for me. That's going to be it for this week's rankings. Make sure you guys check back next week to see who's in my top 25 and who's at number one. But until the next time, the Bench Buddies are out.